first day, Kog Suka, a feast of booths, 15th, Yum, 15th, 15th, 15th day, Shabai Kudash, or 7th month. Um, as we move forward in the cycles, um, the cycles of the year, um, the seasons, spring, summer, um, fall, winter, um, the cohesiveness of both in unit and a fixed time sequence that's been here since the beginning, since Bereshit, since the fourth day of creation, even the first day of creation. We stand and we sit here today to give praise and honor to the one who sits in the highest shamani, who governs all thrones, principalities, powers, kings, rulers, all spirits, whether seen, beings, and unseen. The one who allows us to live and to breathe and give us his neshama, his ruach, and give us his bina, his kukma, his da'ah, his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we may be transformed in the renewing of our mind and that our thoughts and our mind may be true continually. We, we allow ourselves, we allow, when we close our doors of our mind and our thoughts, all carnal will, all carnal thought, all emotions, desires, and fears, that we may receive the light and the ore that's from the beginning. For all that's received it, the light gave you power to become the children of light, the children of ore, that we may walk in newness of life continually, that our booths and our tabernacles and our bodies may illuminate with light from the inside. For yet, we see a world and we see light in the world, but everything is not light. Everything is not ore. It may seem as if it is, but look a little closer and dig through the composite of how it's made. And you can clearly see, you can clearly see masqueraders, masqueraders. So as we move forward on this unit, and all the other humans and days throughout this, this time, we consider the one who was sent from the highest shamayim, the vibrations and frequencies of the word that was sent through the cosmos, from the highest shamayim through the seven shamayim to the surface of the earth, to accomplish what it was sent to do. What it was sent here to redeem, to clean, and to restore. And we see Yahushua Mashiach, our Redeemer, the one who's redeemed us, not with corruptible things as silver and gold as the archons, but with his precious blood. For it's his blood that actually restores, for there's strength in the blood. There's strength in the blood from being shaped and formed from the clay again, from the Adama, the, from the red clay again by the blood of Yahushua and resurrected and have the, the neshama, the ruach, breathing into it, breathe into it once again, that it may resurrect to newness of life, that it may resurrect to how it was when he was first made, the second Adam. So this is the second time, it's another opportunity. It's another opportunity at life that we may boldly lift up our hands and say, I live, I live forever. That the ruach, that the wind, the rue that moves upon the winds on the tops of the trees, on, the, on tops of the myrtle trees, on top of the palm trees, on top of the fir trees, as they move and give praise to your rule by waving in the wind, we lift our hands this year and praise and we wave to you, the one who made all things, Yahuwah. And as we move forward, 
We don't let our minds and our thoughts and our frontal lobe. And we fix our thoughts and our mind on the one and true all who sits in the highest shaman. Giving all intellectual attention to him. Morning time, third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, evening time, meditating human night, continual praise, continual offerings with our body, with our body. So as we move forward, we move forward in we move forward in compassion, humility, tenderness of heart, in forgiveness. Not for ourselves, but for others. So as we move forward, we let love live, and we let love direct. So this is Kukma, Wisdom of Solomon, Kukma Shli Shaluma. 6, 12 through 25. We always start with wisdom. It says, Wisdom, Kukma is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. So when you think about seeking, you can't seek without love. Shaul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, If I have not love, I have not nothing. I'm like a tinkling, tinkling cymbal and a sounding brass. Even if I understand all languages of the Malachim, if I understand all things and all knowledge and all wisdom, I have all the moon that I can move mountains. If one doesn't have a hub, a hub of love, you are nothing. It says in verse 13, it says, She prevented them that desire her in making herself known unto them. She doesn't make herself known unto everybody and every person. It says, Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail. Right. For he shall find her sitting at his doors. Right, so when you start looking at sitting at the front of the tent, the tent door, or sitting in front of the, the waiting to serve, you start seeing where Kukma is. Just like ten, ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. The five who were wise, they, had, they were waiting at the door, in front of the door. The five were foolish had to get their oil back up to a certain level. So verse 15 says, To think there upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watches for her shall, be, shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. So we think about our thoughts, our communication, how we think. It says wisdom, when it shows itself favorably to you, it'll meet you in every thought. That means in your decisions, and how one thinks, and how one sees, and how one understands, and how one hears. And then your fear, you won't have the fear to make a decision. You will make one, but it'll be in Kukma. It'll be in wisdom, you'll make that decision. So, so when we start looking at wisdom, we start looking at Kukma, it's better to make a decision than not to make one. So that's why wisdom is so important in our lives, especially when it comes to anything in the aspect of anything that we're doing. So this is Ecclesiastes Kuhala 7:19. It says, "Wisdom gives strength to the wise more than ten rulers who are in a city." So you can have ten rulers in one city. If wisdom joins oneself to you. You'll be more wiser than ten rulers who are in the city. So you think about that. In times past, with, to be a ruler, you had to actually have some skill. Today, you really don't have to have any skill to be a, a ruler. You had to have a, a knowledge base. Even even Yusuf had to have you know all seventy languages in order to even talk to Pharaoh in the Book of Yasha. Right. So you start looking at understanding and wisdom and kukma and character. Right. These are the, the aspects. But you think about ten men who give their strength to one man. He said, you'd be stronger than that. Right. 
And so we look at the last days, Kukuma and wisdom, you're going to need it. So this is Mashali 8, or Proverbs 8, 8 through 11. It says, All the words of my mouth are righteous, and there is, there is nothing twisted or crooked in them. So you think about a crooked speech. Right? You think about a crooked. Nobody, nobody, nobody likes nothing crooked. Right? If you ever look at something that a crook back, you ever had a crook back in your body, and that thing, that thing lock up your whole back, your whole lower back, and then one side of your body moves one way and the other part don't. <laughs> right? Think about that as crooked and twisted. Right? It says they it says they are all straight to him who understands. So when you understand, it's easy. It's straight to you who understands, right? Only few people who understand. It says, and write to those who find knowledge. So you gotta seek. You gotta seek in love. It says, take my instructions instead of silver and knowledge rather than gold. Right? We look at the silver and gold, we look at the archons, we look at the beams, the Dow Jones Industrial, the SP 500, right? the charts and the EFTs. Right? We look at all these things. He said, wisdom is better than that. Better. He said, you watch, you find wisdom. He said, you find watching at the doors, not watching the chart. Right? It says, it says, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. So, anything that one desires in this world, you can't compare it to wisdom. So, the word for crooked is a quiche or a catch, as we keep, we say. Only reason I'm repeating them, you want to keep these things in memory. It says, all the words, it says, there is nothing twisted or crooked in them. So, this word for crooked is nothing distorted, false, crooked, forward, or perverse. All the words of Yahuwah's mouth. There's nothing distorted, there's nothing false, crooked, forward, or perverse. Nothing. So the word for straight is nakuak or nakuak. It means straightforward, equitable, correct, integrity, uprightness. So the word all the words of Yahuwah's mouth is not distorted, crooked, forward, or, or perverse. It's not. And it is straight, it is straightforward, equitable, correct, and integrity and uprightness. To him who understands. But to those who understand, to those who don't understand, it's distorted, false, crooked, forward, and perverse. They don't, it's just like something detestable. Right? So the book of Psalms, Tahalim 1, 11 and 10. He said, The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning, the beginning, Rashid, of wisdom. And all those who practice it have a good understanding. <laughs> His praise endures forever. So this is a practice, this is a rehearsal, what we're in right now. This whole cog, this mua, this cog is a rehearsal. Because why? It's a practice. We're practicing fearing our father and mother in the highest shamayim, who said, who gave us these things to remember him by, to keep things in memory, keep things in mind. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. So this is EU Job 28 and 12. It says, but where shall wisdom be found? All right, we're looking for it. We're seeking that thing, seeking it out. It says, and where is the place of understanding? He says, man does not know its worth. <laughs> you can see how man, the children of Adam, they don't see wisdom at Kukma, you know, as it was in times past, like a couple, three, 4,000 years ago, where people would travel from sea and land get on ships and boats you'll hear somebody speak some wise, wise words. Right? You start looking at the aspect of these things. It says, and, it says, keep going, it says, and it is not found in the land of the living. There you go. It's not found in something you see. Right? It's not found in something you see. It says, the deep says, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. So you can go all the way in the deep of the ocean. You go in the sea, the salt sea. It says, it cannot be brought, it cannot be bought for gold and silver. It cannot be weighed at, as its price. So you look at gold and silver, you can use that, but it, it's, you, can't, you can't get it with gold and silver. He said, it cannot be valued in gold ophir or in precious onyx or sapphire. And glass or sakut, sakwi, sakwi, 
cannot equal it. So you start looking at glass and crystals, right? And it says, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The topaz of Cush or Ethiopia cannot equal it. Nor can it be valued in pure gold. From where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? This is the place, that's, that's the thing that one has to desire, wisdom and understanding, where the place of it, that, that location. He's like, it is hidden from the eyes of all the living and concealed from the birds of the air, abandoned and death say, we have heard a rumor of it with our ears. It says, Yahuwah understands the way, way to it and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under, under the Shamaims when he gave to the wind its weight and apportioned the weights by measure. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning or the thunder, then he saw it and declared it, and he established it and searched it out. And he said to man, Behold, the fear of Yahuwah. <laughs> it's not in the land of the living. It's not in the land of the living. He said, the fear of Yahuwah, that is wisdom. He said, why would I fear him? He said, you have, you practice that, you have a good understanding. He said, the fear of Yahuwah, that is wisdom. He says, and to turn away from evil is understanding. So you think about the beginning, as we spoke about during Kafar. He said, every imagination and thought was only evil continually. <laughs> every day. He said, to turn away from that, you have a good understanding. <laughs> that is the understanding. Right, so you think about the fear of Yahuwah. The Yah, the He, the Ha, the U'ah. Right. His breath. He said, that, that is wisdom. Right. So keep all that in mind as we move forward. Fix your mind on that. It says, O-D-E Solomon, O-D-E 7. It says, my joy is Yahuwah, and my course is toward him. This way of mine is beautiful. So when we start looking at beauty, we start looking at these things. We start looking at this way. Oh, this is not, it is a beautiful way. It's a, it's a, it's a how you say, a, a clean white linen, love, compassion, lift up your hands and say, I live type way. In nature, blowing on the trees and looking at the animals and in the, in the and the, and the little ants on the ground type way. When you see, when you go, it's whale watching type way. Seeing the, seeing the mammoths and the, and the huge animals that he made type way. Right, it's to delight yourself in his creation type way. It's a beautiful way. Right. So what would you rather do? Never mind. We're going to go there, but a lot of people delight their, their eyes in perverse things. Right? That's not beautiful. <laughs> right? You start looking at this world and how it's constructed. It's there to take your eyes off the beautiful way. Right? It says, but there is a helper for me. Yahuwah, he has generously shown himself to me in his simplicity because his kindness has diminished his grandeur. He diminished it. He became like me that I may receive him in form. He considered like me that I may put him on. He says, and I trembled not when I saw him, because he was gracious to me. Like my nature he became, that I might understand him. And like my form, that I might not turn away from him. The father of knowledge is the word of knowledge. He who created wisdom is wiser than his works. The fear of Yahuwah, that is wisdom. Where can that, where is it located? Where is it at? It's not in the land of the living. You can ask the sea, the trees, you can ask the, the ocean, you can ask the birds. They don't know where they're even, even, even abandoned. Even the lower regions of the earth, in the center of the earth, and the other realms don't even know. You're like, we heard a rumor about it. Can you create that? People say, who created Kukuma? You know, all the wisdom you hear in the world. Who made it? And it says, and he who created me, when yet, when yet I was not, 
when yet I was not new, knew what I would do when I came into being. On account of this, he was gracious to me, and his abundant grace and calm allowed me to seek from him and to benefit from his sacrifice. Right, so you look at the sacrifice that he made too. He put on our nature and it allowed us to benefit from his sacrifice. Keep all that in mind. For he it is who is incorruptible, the perfection of the worlds and their father. Right, so you start looking at the worlds being perfected. Even Yahuwah said in the book of Job, he said, let alone I'm going to put my trust in uh, I don't put my, no trust in the Kedoshim, the saints, let alone those who made from dust. He said, even the Shamayim's weren't even clean in my sight. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, Kupa Mishle Shaluma, 3, 9 through 13. He said, they that push, put their trust in, your, in him shall understand the truth. So we know it's straight, it's equitable words. When you understand, you understand it's straight. You understand the truth now. You have a good understanding when you practice the fear of Yahuwah and to your understand is to know to turn away from every imagination and thought and evil mind that Satan uses to, and Stama and Osbal and all these other beings use to control and take control of people's bodies. It says, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. So you got to be in love. You got to be in love. I said, yeah. ask people, have you ever been in love before? When did you fall in love with Yahuwah? Like people say, when did you fall in love with Yahuwah? But like not, not like uh, brown sugar. When did you fall in love with hip hop? You know, when did you fall in love with Yahuwah? Like, like, it says, it says, for grace and mercy is to his Kedoshim, and he hath care for his elect. Like he has, he has care for his elect. But the ungodly or unrighteous shall be punished according to their own imaginations. Every thought and imagination is only evil continually. Every day. That's what it was in Bereshit chapter 6, as we spoke about before. Your, our own imaginations cause us hurt. Our own mind and our own thoughts cause us hurt. It's not. It has nothing to do with it. It's our own mind. Right? Keep going. It says, which... He says, their own imagination, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken Yahuwah. That's the only, people say, when you neglect the righteous and forsake Yahuwah, he said, every your own, you, you're actually putting yourself in a position where your own imaginations can take hold. And now, when you neglect the very one who made all things, that has all wisdom and who made wisdom, then you're in trouble. Verse 11 says, For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. Right? Miserable. Misery. They say misery loves company. Absolutely not. <laughs> it says, he is, he, he is miserable, and, and their hope is vain. Their labor is unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. So when we start looking at Wisdom and nurture, misery, wisdom and nurture is not supposed to make you miserable. Even when you have a bad day, like when you get to the end of the day, it's like Yahushua when he, Yahushua when he was on the, on the stake, as we spoke about before. He said, I thirst. He had a miserable day that day. <laughs> it was miserable. But at the end of the day, he, he had got that little bit of wine. He's like, woo, it's over with. Right? You're not going to have good days all the time. But the journey to get to the end... That's when you can lift up your hands and say, I live. <laughs> I made it. Right? And it says, and their hope is vain, and their labor is unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. It says, their wives are foolish, and their children wicked. Their offspring is cursed. People want to know what's wrong with, wrong with all the stuff that's going on in the world. It's because people, one despises wisdom and nurture. So therefore, you have terrible children. Right? You have terrible relationships. You have terrible children of Yahuwah. 
It's really simple. It's not that hard. People say it's not that difficult. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, Kukma, C. Shaluma. So you got 7, 6 through, I think it's 7, 6 through 14. And it says, For all men have one entrance into life and, light, and the light going out. So we got one entrance into this world through the, through the womb, the, the, the portal, gateway, stargate through a woman, the matrix. Because we, we, get, we get born into a matrix. <laughs> but, but more people don't know. And it says, and the light going out. So when we come in this world, we go out the same way. We came in naked and we leave naked. It says, wherefore I prayed and understanding was given to me. I called upon all Yahuwah and the Ruach of wisdom came to me. So who's going to give it to you? The one who... The fear of Yahuwah, the fear of your one and the highest shaman who sits in Arabah, he going to give you the wisdom. You say, it came to me. I prefer her before scepters and thrones and esteemed riches. Nothing is in comparison to her. So Yahuwah can see the heart when one prays. He's like, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. The book of James, your code said, hey, if any man lacks wisdom, man and woman, he's like, ask Yahuwah, he'll give it to you. But just know he's going to look at your heart. He's like, why? Because that's what he does. Verse 9 says, Neither compare I unto her any precious stones, because all gold in respect to her of her is as little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. So you start looking at the value. What's valuable? You reckon Job, he was like rubies, sapphires, topaz, even, even the gold of Ethiopia and Cush. He was like, that ain't nothing. Value. What's value? You can go dig it up in the Rinzori Mountains in Uganda, the mountain of the moons that flow into and flow into the Nile River. You can find gold up there. He say nothing compares to Kukma, even as even as anything that one could desire in this world. And it says, verse ten it says, "I loved her above health and beauty." So if you think about health and beauty, he said, like, "What makes a person beautiful? What makes a person beautiful and healthy?" The one who made health and beauty, the one who made Kukma. He says, and chose to have her instead of light. <laughs> what do you mean light? What do you mean light? <laughs> For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. What do you mean more than light? Because when you look up in the sky, you see a sun that rises out of six portal and golden six portal. That light was made on the fourth day. When you go back to the beginning on the first day of creation, the car, he said, let there be light. He said, oh, what light was he talking about? It says, verse 11 says, and all good things together came to me with her and innumerable riches in her hands. And I rejoiced in them all. Well, it's riches when you get that kukuma, you get that wisdom, you search it out. Mm -mm. People don't know. Verse 12 says, I rejoice in them all because wisdom goeth before them. And, 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 and I knew not that she was the mother of them. She wants you to understand why, how wisdom is formed and shaped Kukma, Yahuwah's Kukma from his own mind shaped this whole world. You be like, man, that's the mother of this whole world. Exactly. That's why he is the mother and the father. People don't, he birthed this whole world. And it says, I learned diligently. I learned. I learned diligently. And do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches. Just like people flaunt all their cars and their money and their gold, they make make all these different just like the, the places in Qatar or the or, or Mecca, they have marble everywhere. They flaunt they flaunt all their things, right? You see people with Bugattis and cars and nice Lambos or a nice car, right? They flaunt it. A nice home. He say, man, I don't hide the riches of wisdom. Right? So when you get Kukma, it's, it's the same way as you would see the world. They flaunt their natural material possessions, but you have something that's even more greater than that in value. Verse 14 says, For she is a treasure unto men, that never faileth. Says which they that use become the friends of all your who <laughs> When you start using it, you become his friends. You like you you see the type of friends you who want? <laughs> you who don't want no he don't want people around him. 
He's like, you my friend. I like you. You have wisdom. You have kukma. He's like, I want you. I want you as my friend. Now you see the. Now you see how the mindset we created in His image and His likeness. Now you see the mindset that one has to have. The Father Yahuwah wants people with wisdom around Him. So the sons and daughters want the same thing. Or should they? It says, Which they that use become the friends of all Yahuwah, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. It comes from learning. Like I said, we're going to learn till we, till we leave here. And when, you, when you're willing to learn, when you're willing to learn something, and when you're ready to sit down and learn Wisdom is something that can be given to you. Because even with wisdom and kukma, you still have to learn wisdom. That's how you become wiser. When you have wise, like you has wise people around, he's like, I become the only wise. Like he says, I am the only wise all. <laughs> to the only wise all of him. <laughs> so this is kukma. Shri Shaluma 8, 1 through 16. We always talk about wisdom as we as this is the last one, but as we talk about it, we start seeing, you know, we're just trying to change the frequency on the desires, right? So this is Kukuma Shri Shaluma 8, 1 through 16. That wisdom reaches from one end to the other, another, mightily. And sweetly does she order all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. So we start looking at even young kids. Young children, how, and once you get your understanding of how old you are, and understanding you can understand, and he's like, man, seek out wisdom from your youth. It says I desired to make her my spouse, and I was a lover of her beauty. <laughs> he said I desire her more than health and beauty. Right? <laughs> it says in that she is conversant with all Yahuwah. She talked to him because you know Yahuwah like you my friend. <laughs> she magnified her nobly, yea. It says Yahuwah, she, yea, Yahuwah of all things himself loved her. Of course. For she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of all Yahuwah. Oh, so you know a little bit. <laughs> I need to be around you. It says, and a, it says and, a, and a lover of his works. Are you a lover of Yahuwah's works? You can say, what do you mean? Just go outside and look. See. Verse 5 says, if riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that knoweth all things? What's richer than that? Verse 16 says, After I am come into my house, I will repose myself with her, for her conversation have no bitterness. What? And to live with her have no sorrow. That's why he says, He that despises wisdom and nurture is miserable. But mirth and joy. That's all that's in it. It says, Now when I considered these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied with wisdom is immortality. This mortal must put on immortality. This corruption must put on incorruption. So you got to know some things to do that. It's not going to be like, oh, I just know. <laughs> it's not going to be like, wisdom, kukma has to be in, in you. It's an ally. Or like joins. I say allies. Like the United States with other people or other countries, they be allied. We partners. I know if I'm allied with you, I'm gonna get immortality. The word is the bearer of the bar, Yahushua Mashiach. Wisdom. Verse 18 says, In great pleasure it is to have it her friendship. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Infinite. Endless. Endless riches. She was like, I want, I want to be rich. It's like, what about endless? Infinite. Infinite. That means it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It says, and in the exercise of conference with her, prudence 
and then talking with her, a good report. So conversing with the word of the bear of the bar. He said, that's a good report. Every single day when, when you get reported to the one in the highest shaman. It says, and I went about seeking how to take her to me. <laughs> seek. So in order for him to seek her, to take her to him, he had to love. He's like, I love. I got it. So he chased her. You know how people, you know how you chase a woman in this world? He chased wisdom. He's like, man, I love her. So guess what? I'm going to chase her. And he chased her. He said, I'm going to find out how to get her. You know what people chase today? Things they should not. He said, you, he said what good is, if you have kukma, it'll be, it's joy. So when we start looking at the value of wisdom, we start looking at that. As we move forward, we start looking at it, a, a composite of the mind, kukma. And once it's allied with you, he said, man, you'll understand. You'll understand. So moving on, this is Bereshith 1, 26 through 27. We always got to find out, know who we are, and continue to keep that in mind and know who we are. Right? And Allahim said, and the Allahim said, let us make man in our image, our salim, and after our damuth. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the shamayims, and over the livestock, and over all the earth. It says, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's even the caterpillar. So Yahuwah created man in his own image. In the image of Yahuwah, he created him. Male, Zakar, and female, Nakabah. Male child, female child. Male animal, female animal. He created them. So when we start looking at the beginning, we start looking at the construct of who one is. Right? He said, Let's, let us make man our own image. So if you ain't, you ain't created in Yahuwah's image, wisdom, he said, you, you converse with wisdom, man, you'd be a friend of Yahuwah. So now you see how one has to be in this world right, when it comes to things. So this is Arab Bank Targums, Palestinian Targums, Bereshi. And Yahuwah said to his Malachim, his angels who ministered before him, who have been created in the second day of creation of the world, let us make man in our image and our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl which are in the atmosphere of the Shamaims, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every reptile creeping upon the earth. And Yahuwah created man in his likeness, and the word of Yahuwah created man in his likeness. So you see how you were made. You were created by the word that the bear, wisdom itself, formed you. It says, in the likeness of the presence of Yahuwah, he created him. The male and his yoke fellow, he created them. In the image of Yahuwah, he created him with 240 and eight members, with 365 nerves. We would say 365 nerves, but you still got to beg the difference. 364 nerves, but I'm not going to talk about that subject. And overlaid them with skins and filled it with flesh and blood. Male and female, in their bodies, he created them. He blessed them, abrakah them, and Yahuwah said to them, Increase and multiply and fill the earth with sons and daughters and prevail over it in his possessions and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of heaven and over every creeping thing, creeping animal that creepeth upon the earth. You see how detailed that is? <laughs> so when we start looking at these things, we start understanding our nature and who we are. Right? But you start looking at this creation. This creation is not for everyone. This transformation that you see here is not for everyone. Right? This creation right here, when you start looking at the way the world is today, 
this creation took place all over again. Right. But let's keep going. So the word for make is asa or isa. It means to do, fashion, accomplish. He said, let us make, let us accomplish this. To work, to do, work, produce. Keep that in mind. Let this word, let the word accomplish this. Let the word accomplish this. Produce, to prepare, to attend, to put in order, right? To observe. Let, let us make, let us celebrate, acquire, right? To appoint, ordain, to do, make, exercise, to fashion. Let us accomplish, let us fashion, let us work, let us accomplish this feat of creating Adam. And make a make him in our own image and our likeness. So the word for man is Adam, Adam, man, mankind, man, human being, man, mankind. Ruddy. That is a human being. Right? Mankind. Hypocrite. So when you look at Adam today, we ain't talking about the second Adam. We talking about the Adam. After he fell, right? hypocrite. <laughs> right. So we look at Adam, the Aleph, the Daleth, and the Mim, or the Mim, the Deleth, and the Aleph. Right. However, people say it. So the Aleph is strength, leader, conception, seed planting. We give it a one. The Daleth is tent door, passageway, exit, entrance, portal. It was a four. The Mim, the Mim. Is waters, semen, springs, flood above and below, firmament, waters, right? Fullness of life, oil, flow, cleansing, anoint, and many others. But and that goes to forty. So when you look at the olive and the olive is strength, but when we look at that word, the olive and the meme is dumb, which is blood. So you see the strength is in the blood. Keep that in mind. The strength is in the blood. Right? Which, when you add the, all these up, it equals to 441 from left to right. But when you read it from right to left, it equals to 144. Right? You add 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals to 9. When you break it down even smaller, it goes to 3. But all these aspects of understanding is all entailed in just one name. You, people say they call it sigils, right? You have one, one, one character, another character, another character, and it has multiple meanings with numbering sequences and things that form and shape. And you have blood and strength in the blood. You have, you have a water flowing, semen. There's semen in the blood when woman is in prayer. You got so many things that come in with this. Then you have the nine equals to nine, and it goes from right to left, one forty-four. All that intellect in one little word. Just in that one word, Adam, Adam. So the word for image, is salam, image, images, right? Of course, you know, tumor, right? Mice, heathen gods, image, likeness, resemblance. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, form, shape, right? Phantom. It has multiple meanings, but we know that image and likeness is what one was trying likeness resemblance because you know you can make heathen gods right you see them all around the world mice right we talk about mice but we talk about the rat race right the image of the system right when you start looking at the system itself some people are creating an image of likeness of the system or be reborn in the image and likeness of the system with microchips Head plant, head implants, all types of things, right? But then you have tumors; it can make you sick, just like you see the world today. What they they make you get created in an image and the heathen gods and the rat race and the mice, right? And guess what you get? You get cancer, you get tumors, you get all types of things, ailments that come with it. That's just a part of it. If you created in that image, but we're created in the image and likeness of Yahuwah, <laughs> the one who made all things. Right? These are the aspects of being transformed and 
taking on another image. Because if you don't, hey, we're all destined for dust, but long life, right? long life. So the word for likeness is damu, right? Likeness, similar to, in likeness of, like as, right? So we start looking at likeness, image and likeness. It also means a model, concretely, model, shape, fashion, manner, similar to, likeness, similar to, right? We start looking at these things. Figures, all right? So when we start looking at being created in his likeness, we're talking about are all you who know, have made all things. We're talking about every single aspect of the world. Like you go you go on the mountaintop, you see the painting on the sky, on the on the horizon. It looks like somebody painted in the sky. Like you understand that he 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 is beautiful. And everything he does is beautiful. So therefore he made you in his likeness. So therefore he wants Oh, you mean I desire wisdom more than health and beauty. Yeah, you beautiful as well. So the word for dominion is rada. It means let them have let them have dominion, right? Of course, it means to rule, to have dominion, to dominate, to subjugate, to rule, to have dominion, to dominate, to scrape, to scrape out, right? To subjugate, to prevail, to rule. Let them have, let them domino the fish of the sea, fowls of every creeping thing, and over all the earth. Let them dominate, let them have dominion and rule. Right? And that's how he made us. That's how he made or remade from the Adama, from the blood, from the strength in the blood. Right? So Bereshith 1 28 through 31. And Allahim. And all you who have said, Behold, I have given every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the Shamaims, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And all you who have saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth or Shashi Yun, day. So when we start looking at how he made it, how he made one from the Dhamma, from the red clay, from the red dirt, formed in shape in his image and likeness, and now he's giving you your food back. Notice I said giving your food diet back through a new transformation. So the Aramaic Palestinian Targum, section one, Bereshit. It says, And Yahuwah saw, said, to, said, I have given every herb whose seed seedeth upon the face of the earth and every unfruitful tree for the need of building and burning. And the tree with which, and it says, And the tree in which it is fruit seeding after its kind to you, it shall be for food. So we know there's poison plants out here. There's poison and other things with seeds in it. Right? This is all the discerning process, but we understand the aspect of if you can plant a seed and it can grow, <laughs> just understand what it is. Right? And it says, but if you ain't, it, but also the unfruitful trees for the need of building and burning. So when we start looking at unfruitful trees, we can look at, we can look at a human, we can also look at a person. We also can look at um, the world. Right? The world. So when we look at an unfruitful tree, look at a how, look at a family tree, <laughs> right? Look at a family tree, unfruitful tree, right? But here we go. Um, so when we start, it says, "But to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the shamayins, and to every reptile upon the earth, in which is a living, is the living soul, I have given all herbs." Right? So all herbs ain't good for us. Right? People say, uh, not every. <laughs> right? We can say every plant. Right? But it, and it says, and it was so. And Yahuwah beheld everything he had made, and it was very good. And it was evening, and it was morning the sixth day. 
So when you start looking at every herd, there's poison ivy out here. There's poison oak. Right? There's berries that are toxic. Right? There's a lot of things out here that are not good to eat. But there are things that are good to eat. Right? When we start looking at our diet, we start looking at the things he's given back. Or he say reborn into. Right? I was took away the old and gave you the new, restored it back. Now you start seeing how one needs to change and operate. So the word for plant or herbs is ishev. It means what? Herb, herbage, grass, green plants. Glisten, green, right? Shoot, grass, vegetation, plants, herbage, right? Grass, a chef, a shah, right? So the word for seed is zara or zara or zera, right? It means to sow, scatter seed, sowing, producing, yielding seed. So when we start looking at produce, things that yield, things that can be sown to become pregnant or a woman getting pregnant with seed, right? Or semen. It says be made pregnant. It says to be sown, to produce seed, to yield seed. Um, it also means offspring, descendants, children, uh, seed sowing. It says fruit, plant. Right? So when we start looking at Zara or seed or Zara, these are all aspects of things being planted and sown and producing with sunlight, soil, things of that sort. All these are aspects of the transformation of oneself, right? So, the word for food and meat is okla or akla, which means food, food eating, object of devouring, consuming by wild beast, fire, judgment, consume, devour, eat. How you say meat? Right, so when we start looking at food, it's okla, akla, right? He's giving every herb yielding seed, yielding every fruit tree yielding seed for food. And to all the animals, every herb yielding seed, right? And we start looking at consume, devour, it's for food, it's for, it's their meat. Right? It's for growth, right? So when we start looking at these aspects, we have to look at it the way it is. That's the way he made it. That's the way he wants it. That's the way he established it. Okay. So as moving forward, this is Marshallee, Proverbs 8 and 10. It said, take my instructions instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold, as we talked about before, wisdom. It says, for wisdom is better than jewels and all that may desire cannot compare to her. I, wisdom, dwell in prudence and I, fi and I find knowledge in discretion. The fear of Yahuwah is hatred of evil, hatred of every imagination and thought that's evil. Continually, right? Every day. He said you're supposed to hate it. It says pride, arrogance, and the way of the evil and, per and perverted speech I hate. Right? So every remember I, was, I spoke about before, it says when one is going to be grieved with all of the evil memory, evil thoughts, and evil things that come into one's mind. You got, you got the power and the glittering sword to destroy it. Yahuwah said, every imagination and thought was only evil continually. He said, I was grieved, and I'm going to destroy man that on the earth. Because he hates it. He hates evil. Evil. He says, I have, he said, I have counsel and sound wisdom. I have insight. Right? I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me, princes rule and nobles and all, all who govern justly. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold. So when we start thinking about our fruit. And we start thinking about offering. Right? Silver and gold. Let's see. And he says, and my yield than choice silver. I walked in the way of righteousness, in the path of justice, granting an inheritance to those who love me, and filling their treasures, treasuries. You will possess me at the beginning of his work, the first acts of his own. 
of oh so when you start looking at kukma and wisdom you just read all the stuff he did in the beginning and how he made it man and what he gave him and the transformation through kukma and wisdom and we start understanding by the word of yahuwah the wisdom the kukma that he had in his mind he made adam then you see how his name has so many different means it's, it's a his the name shows it all So here we go, Proverbs 8 and 10 continue. It says, ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. <laughs> well, who was set up before the beginning of the earth? Before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depths. I was brought forth when there was no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped. Before the hills. I was brought forth before the earth even was. Before man can even say earth. Or the beginning, or, or Barashi. It says, I was brought forth before he had made the earth it, it, with its fields, or the first dust of the world. The first dust? You see how much dust in the world? He says, When he established the Shamaims, I was there. When he drew a circle or a kug on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him. How many people can say that? He said, I was beside him. Like a master workman. A master workman has what? Wisdom, kuku. He said, he said, you'll find yourself being a friend of Yahuwah who have all this wisdom. He said, I was daily his delight. Why? <laughs> He's like my friend. Rejoicing with before him, always rejoicing. Always. Keep that in mind. Keep the, the rejoicing. Rejoicing in the inhabited world and delighting in the children of Adam. Amen. Right? So the word for a circle is kug. It means circle, circuit, compass, vault of heavens, compassive, a circle, a kug. So we start looking at the vaults and the spheres and the vaults throughout the Shamaims. We start looking at the sephirot. We start looking at the, the circles, the spheres. We start looking at the circuits and the circles. Look at, he drew this circle on the face of the deep. On the water. Right, so when we start looking at this, this aspect, we have to look at it the way it is. Right? So we look at kug, it means what? Ladder, ascend, descend, work, labor, window. Or ka, I'm sorry, ka. That's the first letter of kug. Right? Ladder, ascend, descend, work, Labor window. The U or the Wa is balance of life. Nail, peg. Let's keep those in mind. Nail, peg. Secure, conjunction, join, hook, bond. The Gamo or the Gimel, reward, camel, throat, canal, ascend, good, to treat a person well. So when you look at it, you know, look at all the words. You can combine them in multiple means, just like Adam. We look at it, the ladder of ascend and descend, the work and labor to the balance of life, right? The, the, the nail, the peg, secured and joined to reward. Right? Why would, how can a circle be all those meanings? To treat a person well. How, how does a sphere produce all of that? Right? All that just in a circle. Right? Pretty interesting, right? So this is... So you look at 360 degrees. 3 plus 6 plus 0 equals 9. Equals 3, right? So you look at 360 degrees. When you start breaking it down to the smallest number, even as you did Adam... Right? When you break down equals to nine as well. But when you break it down to three, you start seeing even that has multiple meanings. 
We look at 90 degree angles, 9 plus 0 equals 9. Break that down equals a 3. Just like Adam. You go 90 day cycle, 90 day cycles per 3 month quadrant in 12 months. When you look at it, uh, when you look at a 364 day cycle, is, when you think about 3 months per cycle, so you get the spring, summer, fall, winter, it's not, that's 90 every single three month cycle. So that's nine plus three equals nine. Break it down as three. The same as Adam. If you use the, the Aubrey Alifa numbering system. It says four cycles transitions in a revolution of time in a 364 day cycle. So you look at a 364 day cycle. In a revolution of time, you got four transitions. Right? You look at three plus six plus four equals a 13 equals to 13 equals to 13 so that's 1 plus 3 equals 4 4 those 4 transition times but keep that in mind when you start looking at these this, this movement cycles we start looking at a sphere we start looking at a circle he drew the circle on the face of the deep it has a, a way bigger deeper meaning than what it said so moving on, this is Marshall Lee 30 and 1. Proverbs 30 and 1. It says, The word of Agur, the son of Jeconeh, the oracle. The man declares, I am weary, Yahuwah. I am weary, Yahuwah, and worn out. Surely I am, I am too stupid to be a man. I have not the understanding of a man. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Kedush one. Who has ascended to Shamaim, and who has come down? Who has gathered the wind in its fist? Right? Who had wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established the end of the earth? What is his name? What is his son's name? Surely you know. Right? When we start looking at he that ascended and descend, when you start looking at Kug or Kaf, what did, what did it say? Ascending and descending for work. Right? And you just read in the wisdom of in Marshall Lee chapter 8, he said what? I was like one beside him, like a master workman. Amazingly, Kug in his sphere. Right. You start looking at these aspects. Right. You say, who got the wind of this fist? When Yahushua was on the, on, the, on the ship, when he was in the bow of the ship. And they said, Master, Master, care not we perish? And he got up out of the, out of the center of the ship and he said, Shalom. He said to the winds and the waves, he said, what manner of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. He's a master workman. He's a master workman. He said, Shalom. Right? So this is Hebrews 11, 13. It says, By Amunu we understand that the universe was created by the word of Yahuwah. So that what, is, that, what, that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. It's not, wisdom is not in the land of the living, as Job said. It's not in the land of the living. <laughs> it's not. He said, by the word, he said, the things that are seen was not made by the things that were were not made by the things that are visible. So Tahalim Psalms 33 and 4 says, for the, for the word of Yahuwah is upright, and all his works are done in faithfulness. He, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of steadfast love of Yahuwah. By the word of Yahuwah, the, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all the hosts, he gathers the waters of the sea as a heat, by his ruach, by his breath. By his breath, he does that, just by talking. He puts the deep in his storehouses. Let all the earth fear Yahuwah. Oh, you fear Yahuwah is, is wisdom. Let all the earth fear, all. Why? Because he made it. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him, all inhabitants of the planet earth. He said, stand in awe of the one who made Kuk known wisdom, who established everything, even the first dust that just forms out of nowhere from the unseen world in your house. All right. So the word for breath, the word for breath is ruach. It means wind, breath, mind, spirit, breath, wind, 
of Shamayim, quarter of wind, side, breath of air, gas, vein, empty thing, spirit. Right, so when you start looking at breath, you start looking at the Ruach, right? It also means temper and anger. Right, so when you start looking at the spirit, the very spirit, or the, and the breath that made the Shamayims is how he did it. His his breath. When you speak out of your mouth, you got you have little air that comes out. Air comes out of your mouth. It it literally comes out and you can feel it on your hands. You can feel that breath hitting your hands when you speak. Right? So when you when you go a little bit further down, it also it also means see or organ of mental acts. It means moral character, spirit of all, inspiring a static state. It also means imparting warlike warlike energy. Yeah, imparting warlike energy, endowing men with various gifts as energy of life, the ruach. Right. So when we start looking at these aspects of ruach, it also means whirlwind and tempest, what they call hurricane. Just like the hurricane that hit, that's it, that's the whole breath. It's just when he just talks. That's what happens when he talks. Right. So when we start looking at these aspects, we're saying about the breath of Yahuwah, he did that, right? So this is Yochanan uh, 101. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with all, and the Word was all, Yahuwah. He was in the beginning with all. He said, I was beside him as a master workman. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, or Kai, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Never. There was a man sent from all Yahuwah, whose name was Yerukinah. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light, the true light, which gives light to every man that cometh coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people didn't receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of all Yahuwah, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of all Yahuwah. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his kabod, his glory. Right? As the son, the only son of the father, full of con and truth. Right? So when we start looking at Yahushua Mashiach, it says he was placed here. Right? It says the son of the full of con and truth, right? This is Yaukanon, this is from another version. The scripture says, and you, and the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. And we saw his esteem, esteem as the only the only brought forth of the Ab Abba. Complete in favor and truth. So when we start looking at he dwelt among us, right? He pitched his tent among us. He he came down and he put he placed himself here on earth. We have to look at this aspect. Right? So this is your all of Yukanan one, of course we know two to twenty-four. It says, Let what you've heard in the beginning abide in you. And if what you heard in the beginning about you, in the beginning was the word. The word that formed all things. It says, because in you, it says, you will be, you will abide in the son, the Ben, and the Ab, and the Father. It says, and this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. Right? So Bereshith. This is in the beginning. Bereshith 101. It says, in the beginning. Allahim created the Shamaims in the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. 
And the Ruach of all the Allahim were hovering over the face of the waters. And all, the Allahim said, Let there be light. So all that received it gave him power to become the children of light. And there was light and ore. And Allahim saw the light was good. And Allahim separated the light from the darkness. And Allahim called the, the ore, Yun, and the darkness he called Layla or night of the shot. And he says, And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Right, so when you start looking at the aspect, right, of this, you start looking at the beginning, right? If you go look at the the complex regular version of it, look at the first letter is Bith or house, right? The beginning, of course you know Rashid is the beginning. Then you have the Bith and you have the Allahim, the beginning of the creation of the gods, right? Because the Allahim means gods, goddesses, and judges, right? But then you go to the first letter of Barah is house. So you got house, house, and you got the olive, which is strength, right? Then you go to at, right? And you go to the next letter is strength. Then you go behold or revealed. Strength, it says house, house, strength, strength. Behold. Behold what? Behold the nail, the peg. Behold the nail, the peg. Behold the top or two, the totality, the nail, the tent peg, the tent peg, C, totality, or the sign signature, exit, mark signature, the nail, strength, right? It says they what? He said he pitched, he pitched his tent. He said in the beginning was the word. He said before the earth even was. He said, by the word of Yahuwah, we know the heavens and the everything was made. So when we see the he first speaking, Yahuwah's first breath comes out, we can see how he pitched his tent here. He came to the earth and he pitched his tent in darkness. Because he said the earth was forming and darkness was over the face of the deep. He pitched his tent in darkness. He pitched his tent here in this dark world. He said, all that received them, and you can not want He said, all that received them, he said, he gave you power to become the children and the sons and daughter of light. He pitched his tent here on earth. Right? Now this, when we start looking at this aspect, and you can go to the end part, right here, and it got the mean, the mem, which is water, fountain, or you got sea, right? Amar, see and speak. See and speak, light, behold, reveal, at the end. He pitched his tent among us. This is Mashali 4 and 7. It says, the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, and whatever you get, get insight. The beginning, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning, Rashid. As we went in the first, if you go back and listen, listen to Abad, you will under, you will see this a little bit if you haven't learned about it, but that's what it is. He pitched his tent here. So the word for tabernacles is sukkah as we move forward into what this day is. The reason why you go through all of those things to get here is because one needs to understand how it happened. And we know we didn't take beliefs through pen and ink. But just with this pen and ink that they, they used to, how you say, destroy. But Yahuwah is using it now to bring us back. That very same thing, just like he used the antidote. And you're going to see at the end of this, he uses, he uses something that's a curse. And he uses that as a way to bring us back. Because we have to see in order to go back. Right? So this is tabernacles, it's sukkah, sukkah, right? It means a thicket, a covert, a booth, a thicket. So you have a thicket, a booth, a temporary shelter. So when we start looking at something that's temporary, this is, this is something that's temporary. We dwell inside of a temporary shelter, right? You can look at your body as a temporary shelter. 
you could look at a tent you put in the ground to go camping as a temporary shelter. Right? You can look at a house as a temporary shelter. You're not going to be in it forever. Eventually, you can't stay in this house forever. Your house that you bought. <laughs> it means a hut, a lair, a booth, a cottage, a pavilion. You ever went to a pavilion at a park? They have like a covering or on your balcony or your house. It's called a pavilion. It's something that you dwell under. A tabernacle, a tent. He dwelt, he put his tent here. He, he came and pitched his tent. He put a tent peg down here in the dark world. He said, all that received the light, he said he gave you power to become children. You could lay claim to it. Tent. It means booth. Of course you know that. Canopies, booths. Right, so when we start looking at sukkah, we look at it that way, right? So we look at the sukkah, how you spell it, right? Sukkah, you have the samik, the kaf, or the kefa, and the, and the hay, or the ha, right? It means fortification. Samik, it means fortification, shelter, spine, skeleton, branch, tower, support, pillar. Then you have kaf, or kefa, kaf, kef. It means what? Hand, palm, leaf, productivity, fruitfulness, teaching, reproducing, hollow rock, hollow hand. Then you have the hay. Behold, reveal, light rays, gifts, stars, illumination. Right? So when you look at Yahushua Mashiach, when he came down from the highest Shamayim, he see pitched his tent in darkness. To do what? By his hand, to do what? To illuminate the world. Light rays. Reveal. Behold. So when you add all these things up, when you, and it equals to 85, when you add up the 60, the Samic, or the Semek, the Kaf, the 20, right? And you got the He, right? Equals to 85. Equals to 13. Yeah, Sukkah equals to 13. That's the same thing as the 364-day cycle. When we look at the 364-day cycle, it equals to 13. And then you get four. How do you say? Four transition times. Or four winds. Right? When you look at a sphere on the 364 day cycle, you have to look at it the way it is. This feast, Sukkah, is during that cycle. Sukkah. Right? And as we, you start looking at these aspects, you start seeing the connections and intertwining of this whole encompassing of what this really means. Right? So this the word for feast is kog. It means festival, feast, festival gathering, pilgrim feast. When you're talking about the pilgrims, you know, like like hey gave you when you was in grade school. <laughs> Pilgrims feast. Feast, a festival sacrifice. Right? So we look at this as a, a feast is a sacrifice, right? a victim, a festival. Yeah, of course it's a victim. Right? We're gonna see why. He says a festival gathering, festival gathering, a feast. Right? So when we start looking at these, it's a feast. It's a it's a time of eating. It's a time of rejoicing. Right? It's a time to dwell in tents and booths. You see, our seeing when Yahushua came into the world. On the first day of creation, the first day, a Kad Yum, it was one. Right? It was one. Right? It was one. It was one. Right? So he came into the world on the first day. And you start seeing this word for cog, it's, this is a feast, right? So when we look at that word kug, as we spoke about, when you say you put the, on the, on the face of the earth, the circle on the face of the earth, right? When you look at kaf or ket, you look at kaf and ket, and you see um, ladder, ascend, descend, work, labor, window, right? 
And then you see gimel or gamel, camel, throat, canal, ascend, reward, good. So we look at kug equals 83, which equals to 11. Right? So when you look at it, even 11, you look at the first day of creation, Akkad, when he pitched his tent. Now you look at the circle of the center, the circle of the earth, the kug, the sphere. Then you look at it, it equals to two. When you add them all up, it equals to two. You know, you look at the second letter of the alphabet is what? House. A house. A body, a palace, a temple. Right? When we start looking at this word kug, we start looking at the understanding of a circle, a sphere. Look at the second, the second, the second letter of the alphabet. Remember when we went over Bereshith? It had a bit. Bereshith, this, the beginning of the creation of the gods. And you see exactly that the, in, on this, a revolution of time, when you look at a, a, a sphere and the vaults, you start to see even this word kug, you, you get the breakdown of a ka. Notice it had house, house. <laughs> Have you ever you've seen the beginning? It had house, house. Barashit Barak, house, house. One, one. Well, you got house, house, and then you have what? A card. A card. Two houses that are a card. Two houses that are one. Right? So this is, of course we know, but we're going to get into it. This is Leviticus, or Yaakov 23 through 44, right? So this is, yeah, this is Leviticus 23. It says, And Yahuwah spoke to Mashiach, saying, Speak to the people of Yasharal, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, and for seven days is the Feast of Booths to Yahuwah. On the first day, you shall have a Kedush convocation. That's what we're doing now. And it says, and ye shall do no ordinary work. Of course, you know that word for ordinary work is malaka. Behold your king. Right. For seven days, you shall present a food offering to Yahuwah. On the eighth day, you shall hold a Kedush convocation and present a food offering to Yahuwah. It is a sol solemn assembly. You shall do not do any work. No ordinary, any ordinary work. Well, you say... Malachi it says, These are the appointed feasts of Yahuwah, which you shall proclaim as times of Kedush convocation for presenting to Yahuwah food offerings. Food. What does Yahuwah eat? It says, Burnt offerings and grain offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings, each on its proper day. Now we're going to understand, we're going to understand why Yahuwah, the things that he eats are different. It says, Besides, the 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 offerings Yahuwah's offerings or Yahuwah besides the Yahuwah's Shabbats and besides the gifts and beside all your vow offerings and beside all your free will offerings which you give to Yahuwah so on top of all the other offerings you got this offering and the other offerings right so you see you see a double double you see a double right it's kind of like the bear sheep house house right you got double <laughs> right, you doing double double offerings Right. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the produce of the land, ye shall celebrate the feast of Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a solemn shab rest or Shabbatun. And on the eighth day shall be a, a solemn rest, Shabbatun. It says, And you shall take on the first day the fruit of the splendid trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs, and leafy trees, and willows of brooks. You shall rejoice before Yahuwah your all seven days. You shall, you shall celebrate it as a feast to Yahuwah for seven or Sheba, Yum, in the year. It is a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. Right? Or Sheba, Yum. All native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the people of Yasharal to dwell in booths. He made us to dwell in booths, temporary dwelling places. He made us to dwell in temporary dwelling places. When I brought them out of the land of Mizraim, 
I am Yahuwah your all. Thus, Mashal declared to the people of Yasharal all the appointed feasts of Yahuwah. So when we start looking at this feast, this Kog, this Muad, we start looking at this appointed time, right? It says celebrate. It says rejoice. It says bring branches, palms, bows, leafy trees, willows, and brooks. It says rejoice before him. You know, have a Shabbatun, Malaka, behold your king. So many aspects taking place. Right? Booths, sukkah, right? All these are all taking place. So the word for solemn rest is Shabbatun. Or sab or Shabbat observance, Sabbatism, a weekly Shabbat, a day of atonement, a sabbatical year, a feast of trumpets, the first day and the last feast of tabernacles, Sabbatism, like Shabbatun, these are all Shabbatuns that we celebrate from the first day of the seventh month, even through. Right? So we look at these Shabbatuns as what? They're special holidays, like special. Rest. It says Shabbat observance, right? So we look at sabbatical, we look at year of release, right? So we say around this time, you're supposed to be releasing people from things, right? So this is the word for seven is Sheba, or Sheba. It says it means seven, cardinal number, an original number, cardinal number seven, seven times a week. So we look at Sheba as seven times. Like you look at the word for seven. Sheba. Right. So the word for rejoice is Samak. Samak. To rejoice, to be glad, right? To rejoice. It says to rejoice arrogantly. <laughs> Which I, it says exult to rejoice. To cause to rejoice, to gladden, to make glad, rejoice. To cause to rejoice, to gladden, make glad. Gleesome, cheer up. To marry, to cause, to make, rejoice. Be merry, joyful, right? So the word for celebrate is kagag. So it says celebrate this day, right? Kagag. So when we look at kagag, kagag is to hold a feast. Hold a festival, make a pilgrimage, keep a pilgrim feast, celebrate, dance. It says stagger. It says to keep the pilgrim feet to reel. And Brown Jarvis Briggs says properly to move in a circle. You mean like the cool, the sphere. Right? I mean, like the 364-day cycle, or sukkah equals the 13. To move in a circle. Now you see people say, why are we moving in a circle? That is specifically a march in a sacred procession. Right, when you look at the procession, the, the, the world calls it a procession of the equinox, procession, procession on the fall equinox, right? Procession of the, the solstice, right? You look at these aspects of the moving of the, of the seasons, four per time, right? When we start looking at these aspects, we start breaking it down, right? And you start looking at these aspects. It says sacred procession, to observe a festival, to be giddy, to celebrate, to reel to and fro. Right? So the word for got the kagog, right? When you add them up, we got ket, or the kath, and the gamo and the gamo, right? You got ladder, ascend, descend, work, labor, window. Then you got gamo, camel, throat, canal, ascend, reward, good, right? When you add them all up, you got eight, three, three. You got equals to 14, right? When you, when you add them up, which I didn't do here, but if you add them up, you get to five, which gets to what? Behold, light, reveal. That's the fifth letter of the alphabet. Right. So when you look at ascend, when you add them all up, when you start adding the words up and the meanings, it means you can say ascend and descend, the latter working and laboring for a good reward. And you do that in a what? In a cycle of a year, in a sphere. 
in a circle, in a procession. You do it in a procession. Right? And by doing it in a procession, then you go all the way back to 364 and you even go back to Sukkah. They all equal. You start thinking about procession, moving in a circle. Right? And then you can look, even look at 14, even as and so when the fullness of time came, Yahuwah sent his son Yahushua, made of a woman, born of a woman, right, into the world. Fourteen generations. Right? Move in a circle to be glad, to be, how you say? Celebrate. Right? Celebrate. But when we start looking at this aspect, we got we're gonna look at it a little deeper, right? So the number, so when we start looking at a circle, so the number pi, right, with a mathematical constant, there's a ratio of a circle's circumference in, to its diameter, or approximately equal to 3.14159. The number of pi appears in many formulas across mathematics and physics. It is an irrational number, meaning that it cannot be expressed excessively as a ratio of two integers. Although fractions such as 22 and 7 are commonly used to approximate it. All right, so when you add up 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 plus 9 equals 23. When you look at 23, you look at it um, according to the alephist, where you got 22 letters in the alephist, right? The first letter is the aleph. The 22nd letter is the tau or the two, right? It equals to 23 because you got the aleph and you got the tau. I am the Aleph and the Tau, right? The book of Revelation, Kazum 1 and 7 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds. Remember, in 14 generations, in Kagag, how you say when you add it up, and it moving in a procession in a circle, what happened? It says, in 14 generations, in Matthew Alpha, chapter 1, from Abraham to, to Mashiach was cut off, it was 4,232 or 33 years at, 14 generations, 14 generations, 14 generations, 14 generations. And it says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And those who pierced him, or oh, you mean nailed him. Isn't that how he came into the world? He pitched his tent. We're going to get into that. And all the tribes of the earth shall wail on account of him. Even so, a moon. It says, I am the Alpha, I am the Aleph, and the two. I'm the, it says Alpha and Omega, but it's I am the Aleph and the two. I am the 23. I am the 3.14159 that people are so busily trying to figure out. He says, I am the Aleph and the two, says Yahuwah, who is present, right? Who was past and who is to come, future. I am past, present, and future. I am the Aleph and the two, I am the 23, and I am the circumference of a circle. I am all of that. I am your Kagag, I am your spherical circle, I am your procession movements in a circle when you dance in a circle, moving in a circle. I am the Kug that was put on the face of the deep. He's everything. He said, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, right? So he's, he says, the Almighty, or the Shadi. So when you start looking at this thing on a, on a level, you start understanding that Yahuwah, and his Ben Yahusha, is literally the formation of all things. Even the, even the wisdom and the kukma that man derives. He says what? He makes the wisdom of man foolishness. Man's wisdom, right? The bare sheep that we read, all that man's wisdom, all that complex, he made that stuff. He's everything. Why would you not? People say, why would you not fear somebody who's infinite? It's unsearchable. Even if I try, you should search this out for seven days to the rest of your life, you won't be able to search him out. He knows everything. So this is continuing on Leviticus 23 20, 39. It says, on the 15th day of the seventh month, 
It says, when you have gathered in the produce of the land, right? We're just going back over little aspects of this thing. You shall celebrate, you shall kagog, the feast, or kog, Yahuwah's, Shabbat, Yun, or seven days. On the first day, you shall have a solemn rest, a Shabbatun. And on the eighth day, you shall have a Shabbatun, or Shabbatun, Shabbatun. It says, and you shall take on the first day, first day, the fruits of the splendid trees, and the branches of palm trees, and the boughs and the leafy trees, and the willows of brooks, and you shall rejoice before you who are your all. Shabbat Yun, or Sheba Yun. <laughs> Sheba Yun. Seven days. All right, so you start seeing these trees, right? You got palm trees, right? You got splendid trees, branches, palm trees, leafy trees, willow brooks. You shall rejoice before Yahuwah, right? You're all, seven days. So this is Bereshit 1 and 9. It says, and Yahuwah said, let the, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And so it was. And Yahuwah called the dry land earth, and the waters he gathered together he called seas. And Yahuwah saw that it was good. And Yahuwah said, let the earth sprout forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, fruit trees bearing fruit. You mean the produce? Right? In which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation and plants yielding seed. Produce? Gathering the produce? And according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit. These ain't unfruitful trees, these are fruitful trees. Right? In which is their seed, each according to its kind. And Yahuwah saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. When you look at Adam, when we added Adam equals a nine, when you break it down to small, equals a three. When you add a 360 degrees, you equals a nine, when you break it down, equals a three. When you look at a 90-day cycle of a three-month between each season, you got four seasonal changes, and in the, in the, in the movements of the, of the sphere, each one equals a 90, which equals a three. Right? These are the times what? When things die, things grow, when produce is produced. When it gets colder, when it when the people people look at the storms and the seasons and they, they automatically they don't understand how the seasons move. When the, when the, when the actual cold weather, when the hot weather gets colder colder to the fall, the storms get more violent because it's going to the transition time. That's why you get these strong storms. That's why the lightning is going harder. Because the transition, that's the same thing we go through our life. When you see things getting harder and harder, things get more intense, just know you're going through a transition. It's the same way when you look at this, the seasonal movements of the stars and the, and the planetary alignments during the times of the feast and all of the, the cosmic movements and the star movements and the constellation movements. All of these things take place. So the word for trees is eights. Eights. It means tree, wood, timber, stock. Isn't that stuff you bring in for this feast? Timber, right? Stock, sticks, gallows, trees, wood, pieces of wood. Isn't that what we bring in, right? Firewood, cedar wood, woody flax, right? It says carpenter, it says gallows, planks, timber, right? Trees, right? Wood. So when we start looking at these words for trees, Every tree bearing seed, right? After its kind, like all these are all aspects of this feast. The word for branches in Leviticus 23, what is cough? Yeah, cough. Palm, hand, sole, palm, hollow, or flat of hand, hollow, power, hand. Amazingly, the branches are what? Hands. <laughs> right? You see that? Hands. Hollow object. Hand shaped branches. Palm trees. Palm trees. Handles. Keep all these things in mind. Leaves. Palm tree. Hand. It also means a paw of an animal, of a soul. For branches. 
So the word for palm is tamar. Does it say bringing palm, palm leaves? Palm, palm branches, palm leaves is, is tamar. It means palm tree, date palm. I don't know if you any, anybody ever ate some dates from a tree. They're real sweet, right? Depending on where you get them from. And it says a palm tree. I don't know if you've ever seen a palm tree or a palm. Right? Palms are an interesting tree. Right. So this is Nakumya or Nehemiah 8 and 13. On the second day, the heads of the father's house of all the people with the priests and the Levites came together to Azra, the scribe, in order to study the word of, of the Torah. And they found it written in the law that Yahuwah had commanded by Mashah that the people of Yasharal should dwell in booths. Right, we just read that. <laughs> so they were reading Leviticus, right? Vegas 23. He said they, they should dwell in booths. It written in the law that it says what he said. And they found it written in the law that Yahuwah had commanded Mashah that the people of Yasharal should dwell in booths during the feast in the seventh month, and that they should proclaim it and publish it in all their towns of Jerusalem. It says, go out, it says, go out to the hills and bring the branches of the olive. Right? The wild, it says the wild olive, the myrtle, the palm, and other leafy trees to make booths as it's written. All this stuff is made on the third day. Amazingly, the third day, all these things were made. Shalishi Yun. And so the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on his roof, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of Yahuwah. Right? See, booths on the roofs, booths in the courts, everywhere. And in the square of the water gate, and in the square at the gate of Ephraim. And all the assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and lived in the booths. For from the days that Yahushua, or Jeshua, or Joshua, the son of noon to that day, the people of Yashra had not done so. And there was very great rejoicing or gladness or glee. Right? Rejoicing. Right. And day by day, from the first day to the last day, he read the book of the law, the Torah of Yahuwah, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day, there was a solemn assembly according to the rule. But that word for rule is mishpah, judgment, according to the judgment for their life. So when we start looking at them going out and getting the olives, the, the myrtle, the palm, the leafy trees, right? You see, I've seen this aspect, right, on the third day of creation, when they got the, brought in the produce of the land, right? When we start thinking about the third day of creation, the produce, we start thinking about the Adama as we went over. Adam, how he was made, talking about the Kug, the Kagog, the sphere, which I'm thinking about every aspect of the building blocks of this. Right? All these things are for a reason. So this is Bemid Bar Numbers 29, 12 through 40. Now, you got a little reading here, but here we go. It says, And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a caduce convocation, a mikra, right? It says, You shall not do any ordinary work. Of course, you know, that's malakah, behold your king, right? And we have mikra, which is a convocation, a reading. Right? It says, And you shall keep the feast of Yahuwah seven days, and you shall offer a burnt offering. And it says, and <laughs> Offering a burnt offering, a food offering. With a pleasing aroma to Yahuwah, 13 bulls. Notice this word, thir notice you see 13 in here. Same thing you saw, right, with Sukkah. Right, you wonder where they get that number from. You're like, oh, what, what did we mean 13? I'm trying, people's like, oh, they didn't know this stuff. They knew exactly what they were doing. They had 13, it said 13 bulls from the herd, two rams, 14 male, la 14 males, lambs, a year old, what? What were you with 14? Kagog? Or was that Kug? Mm hmm. Oh. 
You notice this. People say, do you see, right? Says, and they shall be without blemish in their grain offering for fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for each of the 13 bulls, two-tenths of each of the two rams, and a tenth of each to the 14 lambs. So you got 13 and 14, right? Notice you got 13 and 14. There's also one male goat for a sin offering, right? You got to have that goat. You got to have that goat, as we spoke about with Kafar. You got to have that goat. It says, besides the regular burnt offerings, it's grain offering and it's drink offering. You notice you see this, this pattern. It says, on the second day, huh? We just did that on the first day. <laughs> that was just the first day. On the second day, 12, 12 bulls from the herd, two rams, 14 male lambs, a year old without blemish, with grain offering and a drink offering for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs in the prescribed qualities. Also, one male goat for a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offerings, and his grain offering and their drink offering. So now you got, you went from 13 to 12. It's countdown, right? Then you got 11, right? On the third day, 11 bulls, two rams, 14 male lambs. Notice that the 14 is still there. A year old, without blemish, and without grain offering, and a drink offering for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, if prescribed qualities. Also, one male goat for a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offerings, and his grain offerings, and his drink offering. I mean, this is a bloodbath. On, on the fourth day, ten bulls, two rams, fourteen male lambs, a year old, without blemish, with the grain offering and the drink offering, fourteen for bulls, for rams, and for lamb, for the lambs in prescribed qualities. Also, one male goat for a sin offering, besides a regular burnt offering, his grain offering, and his drink offering. Look at that. All that. Every single day. On top of the other offerings they had to do for the Shabbats and for the daily sacrifices and everything else. Ooh, what a joyful occasion for the animals. It's a beautiful day, right? Continuing on the fifth day, nine bulls, two rams, 14 lambs, male lambs, a year old without blemish, with the grain offering and the drink offering and the bulls for the rams and for the lambs in the prescribed quantities. Also one male goat for a sin offering besides the regular burnt offerings and his grain offerings and his drink offerings. On the sixth day, eight bulls, two rams, 14 male lambs, a year old without blemish with the grain offerings and the drink offerings for the bulls and the rams and for the lambs in prescribed quantities. And also the male goat and the sin offerings beside the regular burnt offerings and his grain offerings and his drink offerings. On the seventh day, seven bulls, two, two rams, 14 male lambs, a year old without blemish with, the, with the, the grain offerings and the drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs in prescribed quantities as one male goat for a sin offering beside the regular burnt offerings, his grain offerings and his drink offerings. So you can see how many offerings take place during this feast, this card. So what does one has to offer? You say you got to bring a food offering every day? I don't have all these lambs and 14 male lambs and two rams, right? Here go to, on the eighth day, you shall have a solemn assembly. You shall not do any ordinary work. So here we go. But you shall offer a burnt offering, a food offering, a pleasing aroma to Yahuwah. One bull, one ram, seven male lambs of a year old. Right? Notice you got one ram, one bull, one one ram, one, and seven male lambs, a year old without blemish, and the grain offering and a drink offering for the bull, for the ram, and for the lambs, and prescribed qualities. Also, one male goat for a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offerings and his grain offerings and his drink offerings. These shall you offer, it says, these shall you offer to Yahuwah, it says, these shall you offer to Yahuwah at all your appointed feasts. In addition to your vow offerings and your free will offerings and your burnt offerings and your grain offerings and your drink offerings and your peace offerings. So all these offerings are all at one time. So these animals are getting slaughtered, destroyed. Right? Think about how he made man in the beginning. Right? So Mashal told 
the people of Yashara, everything just as Yahuwah had commanded Mashah. <laughs> huh? So this is Yerim Yahu 7 and 20. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah all, Behold, my anger and my wrath will be poured out, out of this place upon man and beast, upon the trees, upon the field, and the fruit of the ground. It will burn and not be quenched. But thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the all of Yashara, add to your burnt offerings and your sacrifice. That's what we just did. You see what he just added? He just said add. He said, on top of your offerings. <laughs> he said, add to your burnt offerings and sacrifices and eat flesh. For in the day that I brought them out of the land of Mizraim, I did not speak to your fathers or commanded them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this, I, this, this command I gave them, obey my voice, and I will be your all, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the way that I commanded you, command you, that it may be well with you. But they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in their own imagination, their own mind. They forsook you, right? They despised wisdom and nurture, as the wisdom of Kukma Shalit Shaluma said. Their own counsel and the stubbornness of their own evil, of their evil heart. Every imagination and thought was only evil continually. That's why they killed all them animals. That's why they destroying it. That's why they did it. so many offerings. And went backward and not forward. So, Second Enoch forty-five, Alahima points points out that he does not want people to sacrifice people sacrifices and burnt offerings, but hearts that are pure and crushed. Right? Take away the stony heart, crush that heart, give your heart of flesh. If anyone is prompt in performing a good oblation in front of the face of Yahuwah, then Yahuwah will be prompt to accept it on his account. And he will not perform righteous judgment for him. If anyone makes a lamp numerous in front of the face of Yahuwah, then Yahuwah will make his treasure stone numerous in his kingdom, highest kingdom. Does Yahuwah demand bread or lamps or sheep or oxen or any kind of sacrifices at all? Does he? He don't demand that. He says, that is nothing but Yahuwah demands pure hearts. And by means of, of all those things, he tests people's hearts. I want to see where your heart is. Is your heart, is it heart, is it to the beginning? When I made man and put him over the authority of fish sea, and the third day made the, they made the herb building seed out of his kind, where your heart at? So this is Psalm Sahalim 51 and 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. That's what he said. Didn't that say wisdom with that? He said, pursue after her, it's joy. He said, be allied with her is immortality. He said, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me in your willing ruach. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Restore, get joy, your salvation, uphold and willing ruach, right? So he need joy in the ruach. He said, then I will teach transgressors your ways. He said, deliver me from blood guiltness. O all you who of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. So you start seeing all that blood guilt that they had on all these feast days, and all the animals they slain. Says Yahuwah, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifices, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of all are a broken ruach, crushed. Hearts, a broken and a contrite heart, crushed. All you will not despise. You won't despise that. This is Psalms 45 through 8. It says, Baraka is the man who makes Yahuwah his trust. He that trusts in Yahuwah will understand the truth. It says, Who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Yahuwah, my all, Allahim. Your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them. Yet they are more than can be told. <laughs> There's no way. He said they're more than what can be told. I, in sacrifices and offering, you have not delighted. Never. So all them sacrifices they did, all these Kuk Kog Shabuas, he ain't never, Kog uh, Suka, he never delighted in any of that. 
So we just wasted our breath, all that air, reading it, but he never delighted in any of it. Can you imagine reading that? And then he never, think about it. All the people who read that, and he never delighted in it. Not one time. Just, he says, but you have given me an open ear. He says, burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. And he just said that. I never, I never spoke to him concerning that. Then, then I said, behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. Huh? I delight to do your will, O my all. Your tour is within my mind. So the person that came on the scene is coming on the scene. Didn't he already knew his will? Right? He already knew. So you can now one twenty four to twenty nine. Now there had been sent from the Pharisees. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, "Then why are you immersing?" If you are neither the Mashiach nor Al Yahu or a Nabi, you cannot answer. Then th answer them, I immerse, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany according to, across the Yardan where Yukonon was immersing. The next day he saw coming toward him and said, Behold, the lamb, or the sacrifice of Yahuwah, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. He was. He said before the world was even was, before the sea got us decree, before anything was ever created. Sacrifices and offerings you, you had, you would never took any pleasure. You never did. Right? When you start looking at the aspect of these things, he never required that. I never did that. I never wanted it. Never did. Never will. So, truth of the Kudus 12, lesson 42 to 4 through 7. For I have you yet not read that all Yahuwah who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man or woman leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife or her husband and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore all have joined together let not man put us under they said unto him why did Mashah then command to give a writing of divorcement he said unto them Mashah because of the hardness of your heart suffer you to put away your wives, even permitted you to eat flesh for many causes, but from the beginning it was not so. So when we start understanding, as we go through each cog or each muad in this, these Shabbatoons, you see clearly that it was so many sacrifices and things that were done throughout these cycles of 364 and these cycles, that he never, ever wanted it. Ever. So many Shabbatoons, so many feasts, so many cogs that went by, and none of them he wanted. Not one. None of those sacrifices he wanted. So this is the truth of the Kudus 12, lection 38. And some of the disciples came and told him, a certain Egyptian, a son of Bilal, who taught that it was lawful to torment animals if their suffering brought any profit unto men. Right, so when you start looking at tormenting animals, this is why Yahushua should beat the people out of the temple, selling it, selling turtle doves and animals. To do what? To torture them. <laughs> it brought profit to them. It brought profit to them. They were making money off of that. Why would you want to stop animal sacrifices? It's gonna it's gonna mess up the whole industry. The whole industry gonna be messed up. Ain't nobody gonna have no more money. No more cash flow, no more jewels, no more, no more gold, no more silver, no more topaz, no more emeralds, no more sapphires. As the EU wrote, he said, wisdom is greater than that. They won't have that anymore. And it says, and Yahushua said unto them, verily I say unto you, they who partake of the benefits which are gotten by wronging one of all's creatures cannot be righteous. 
nor can they touch, could do stings or teach the mysteries of the kingdom, whose hands are stained with blood, and whose mouths are defiled with flesh. He said, I never command you to do that. I gave you what to eat in the beginning. I made Adam in, in my image and likeness. I gave you on the third day what to have. That's why you go on the field to get your myrtle, your, your palms, your branches and your twigs and all these things, all these trees that I made on the third day. And you use those branches and you give praise to you. Or you mean the cough, your hands. People wonder why they fingernails grow. <laughs> yeah. And it says... It says, all, it says, all give it the grains and the fruits of the earth for food and, the, and for the righteous man. Truly, there is no other lawful sustenance for the body. You forsaken the righteous and you whore. You despise wisdom and nurture. So therefore, add to your sacrifice and eat flesh. For in the days that I brought you out of the land of Mizraim, I never commanded you to do that. Right. So Daniel 9.27, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And for a half of the week, he shall put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. So when we start looking at him putting an end to it, he put an end to that stuff, right? Tahalim 59 through 13. That's why he was beating the people out of the temple. Get out. I'm stopping this thing. I'm stopping it all. It's like a mother and a, it's like a mother and a father who finally say, you know what? I'm going down and beat Abraham myself. It's like when they come down here, I'm going to beat them myself. I'm going to show up to your school. I'm going to show up to your school and go beat you. That's what the temple represented. It was like their school. So I'm going to show up to your school. I'm going to beat y'all myself. Right. This is Psalm Talim 50, 9 through 13. Says, I will not accept a bull from your house or goats for your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. For I know all the birds of the hills and all, all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is world and its fullness are mine. I'm not telling you nothing if I'm hungry. He said, offer to Yahuwah a food offering. A food offering? Yahuwah wants a food offering? Offer to Yahuwah a food offering for seven days. And they will kill an animal and offer him that. Slaughtering things, right? Do I eat flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? Do I do that? Offer, offer to Allahim a sacrifice of thanksgiving and, and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon him in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify and bold me. Right? Luke 9, 5, 19. So Yahushua said to them, Truly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the Father doing. What's, whatever the father does, the son does likewise. So the, the son don't eat flesh. His father don't eat flesh. His son don't eat flesh. His father didn't accept sacrifices and offerings for sin, and he did not use it for. Did not accept any offerings. Neither does Yahushua, Mashiach. So why are people still doing it today? Why are people still doing it? Why are people still do, eating flesh? Why? Yahushua don't do it. Yahuwah don't do it. So why are people doing it today? Like he said, because of the hardness of your heart. Right? People got stony hearts. It says, For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. So the word for thanksgiving in Psalms 50 is todah. Or todah. It means confession. Praise, thanksgiving, to give praise to all, thanksgiving in song, a hymn of praise, thanksgiving, a choir, uh, it says, or procession of, or line, right, we start procession in a circle, or a line, like people be like, what, a line or a company, people are like, a line, a procession, that means a circle, right? Praise in a circle or in a line, like people get in a line and a straight line. People are like, where, where do they get these things like drum lines or or things like you see uh, people have step lines, right? Things of that sort. Procession in a circle. Praise in a choir in a circle. It says, thanks, 
thank offerings, sacrifice of thanksgiving, confession. Right? When one when one praising Yahuwah, you confessing it, man, I did wrong, but then I'm singing praise to Yahuwah while I'm in a circle, a procession, right? In a circle, confessing my sins and singing at the same time. <laughs> in a circle. Is that like something you you know, people look at that, right? That's, you know, you think about Tudah, right? So Yeshua 55 and 9 through 13. So when we start looking at these Thanksgiving offerings, he said, give an offering of Thanksgiving, right? So 50, Yeshua 55, 9 through 13. For as the Shamaims are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So he way higher. For as the rain and the snow come down from Shamayim and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So these, these winter times and these times of the seasonal cycles and the 364 day cycle inside of a procession and a sphere are all needful. They're all needful. These are all things that we experienced. We experienced these things. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It's going to be the same way. It's there to water. He's like, so the, so the word that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purposed. It's going to accomplish what I purposed. It shall succeed in the thing which I sent it. What did he, how did he make Adam? I made Adam with the word of Yahuwah. And what does Adam mean? It means to, he says that word for make. What was what it word for make? It meant to what? Accomplish. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Accomplish. The word accomplished, when he said make, it accomplished by creating Adam in his image. Let us celebrate. And then it say celebrate too? It was an accomplishment. It meant celebrate. Oh, you mean Kagag, moving a procession in a circle. Oh, moving a procession in a circle. Kagag, Adam. Right? It's an accomplishment that he made Adam. But let's keep going. It says, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It shall accomplish what I purpose it and shall... Succeed in the thing which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. So you look at Adam being formed from the dust of the ground. It succeeded. It, it was an accomplishment. He made man his image. Adam, strength in the blood. And it says, and it says, for you shall go out in joy. That's how wisdom is acquired. Right? When you acquire kukma, you get joy. He said, you despise wisdom and you miserable. He said, for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in shalom. That's what peace is. He said, the mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. What was the word for hand? Or how you say branches? Kaf, right? All the trees shall clap their hands. Yahushua said, he that believeth on me as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But he also said, Barak is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the unrighteous, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, right? nor standeth in the way. What is going on? He said, His delight shall be in the law of Yahuwah. And in it does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. Like a tree. Not a tree. Like a tree. His hands will be like branches planted by the rivers of living water. And bring forth its fruit in its season. You mean right now? He said, All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And break forth into singing. Instead of thorns, you know what thorns are. 
shall come up cypress or cypress fir. Instead of briars, shall come up myrtle. And it shall make a name for Yahuwah. Huh? An everlasting sign shall be not be cut off. So you start looking at this aspect of these, these trees and these singing. And the word being formed, right? And accomplishing what it was sent to do. As it was when it made, let us make man in our image. The Allahims, by the word, Yahuwah said, by his word, he formed Adam. The word accomplished everything he was going to do. And guess what he said? He said, he's going to be like trees, planted by the rivers of living water who believe in the sun. Right? Guess what he said he's going to have? He said, they gonna, the mountains will break from the singing. He says, and the trees shall clap their hands. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It says, and it shall make a name for you, and an everlasting sign shall be not, not be cut off. Right? So you look at the word myr for myrtle, like you look at a myrtle tree. If you go look it up, myrtle tree is a is a small leaved aromic evergreen shrub native to the Mediterranean. Myrtle foliage is an aromatic and a small white summer flower. Flowers are fragrant. Fragrant. It has a nice smell to it. It has a nice smell to it. He said, man, these trees are going to start clapping their hands. Huh? These trees are going to start clapping their hands. What do you mean, cough? Branches. So, fir tree. It says, fir, fir tree firs differ from other confires in, ha in having erect uh, cylindrical cones. Right? You have centimeters and things. It says, long disintegrate at maturity to release the winged seeds. Huh? They release wing seeds. Oh, you mean like third day every tree plant yielding seed with fruit trees after its kind? Like you know when branches start clapping their hands, the seeds start going out. They're like winged seeds. They fly. The seeds be flying. They're like where are they going? Wherever the wind takes it. It says, in contrast to spruces, fir cones do not hang. Even large fir cones grow upward like candles. Huh? Like candles. They grow, it says, and the new growth of the tree. Huh? It says, fir, now this is their writings, right? This is definitions, right? You know, people are like, yeah, I'm creating the U.S. image. I say, yeah, yeah. you might want to start looking at trees and studying botany right? and astrophysics, right? Or astro, you know, things of that sort. Movement of the planets. It says, it says, fur ab abies are genus, about 45, 48 to 58 species of evergreen uh, conferous trees in the family of Pinaki, right? They are found on mountains. What do you mean? Is it said? Yes, y'all said the mountains gonna what? And the hills gonna start break out the singing, and the trees are gonna clap their hands. You mean the myrtle trees in the first? Instead of briars and thorns, gonna be myrtles and firs. It says, and found on mountains throughout much of North, it says North and Central America, Europe, Asia, and North Africa. It says the genius is most closely related to this, the Cedrus Cedar. So when we start looking at these eights or these trees, that's, these mountains are going to break out in their singing, right? And these, and these trees are going to start clapping their hands, the myrtles and the firs, and the winged seeds, and the fragrances. That's going to be flowing off. When we start looking at these aspects during this cog, this muad, we start looking at the beginning of creation on the third day when this, all these things were made. And then you just said, He that believeth on me. After scripture, I said, Out of his, he said, You should be like a tree. You be like a tree. I mean, you be, you be, you be like things. You be like a lot of things. <laughs> right? In the earth. Alike. 
So the word for Cyprus for is in Hebrew is barosh, right? It means cypher fir, juniper, pine, noble tree, uh, statelessness. It means material for a temple. <laughs> material for a temple. Remember we were just talking about unfruitful trees, what? Were made for building and burning, right? But you start looking at these, building and burning, right? And it also means, also means hence, a lance. A musical instrument. A musical instrument. Fir trees, cypress. You know, the ones with the wing seeds. The fir tree. So the word for myrtle is hadax. Or hadax. Hadaxa. Just myrtle tree. Right? You know, a myrtle tree have a fragrance to it. Which is interesting when we start looking at this thing on the level that needs to be looked at. Right? When we start looking at it on the level it needs to be looked at. So we look at this feast, right? We look at this cog, this muad, this feast of Sukkah, where he pitched his tent here on earth. The tab how you say his tabernacle. And then we start looking at the offerings, how the animal sacrifice has been done away. You got, but you gotta present a food offering of all the animal sacrifice. You would have made all that stuff stop. This is Bereshit 2718. Or oh, Shemuth, I'm sorry. Exodus 2718. It says, The length of the court shall be 100 cubits and 50 cubits, and the height 5 cubits, with hanging and fine twine linen and bases of bronze, and all the utensils of the tabernacle for their use, and all its pegs, and all the pegs of the court shall be bronze. It says 20, it says, you shall command the people of Yasharal that they bring to you pure beaten olive oil for the light, that the lamp may regularly, may regularly be set up to burn in the tent of meeting, outside the veil that is before the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall tend it from evening to morning before you You mean evening and morning? <laughs> we read about in Kafar, you had to have two lamps. One in the morning, one in the evening, right? You gotta have your lamp continually burning, right? So here we go. And it shall be a statute forever to be observed throughout your generations by the people of Yasharal. Right? So the word for tabernacle is Mishkan. Mishkan, it means dwelling place, tabernacle, dwelling place, temple, habitation, tent, dwelling place. Specifically, a tabernacle, woods, dwelling, right? A tent. We talked about earlier how you should pitch this tent here, as he did in the beginning. And you can see how you had the tent pegged, secured, all throughout. Just the first sentence, the word of Yahuwah, pitch this tent here. So the word for peg is yatsad, or yateid. Or yated. It means pin, stake, peg, nail, peg, tent, tent, stake, nail, pin, right? So when we start looking at this tent peg, this tabernacle with this olive oil in there, isn't that when you start looking at the trees that Nehemiah and them told you to get? He told you to get olive branches. Oh, you mean olive branches, myrtle branches? Willow, fir tree branches, right? Fragrant wing seeds. Olive, for the olive trees, for the tabernacle as well. Also, you need the tent pegs. We got tent pegs in here. You see, who should pinch this tent? And he's talking about the tabernacle as well. You need to have tent pegs in it. Right? The place where you're going to dwell. These pegs, these secure, these nails. How you say? You know, nails. This is Yeshua 41 and 7. It says, The craftsman strengthened the gold myths, goldsmith, and he who smooths with the hammer, him who strikes the anvil, saying of the soldering, it is good. And they strengthen it with nails, so they cannot be moved. Right? You, you, you nail them, temp, you nail them, them pegs, the notad, 
the lethed and those ooh, the wa, the ooh in the ground, it don't move. When you nail it, when you nail something, it don't move. But you, O Yasharal, my servant, your code, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend. The only way you can be friend with Yahuwah, <laughs> you gotta have some wisdom, as we read in the in Kukma Sli Shaluma. You whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from the furthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your all Yahuwah. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who are incensed, all who are what? Incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Incensed. <laughs> it says, and those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. So you start thinking about strengthening it with nails and they cannot move, right? We start looking at these aspects. Or you start thinking about Yahuwah, Yahushua pinched his tent here. Right? But notice these things, we think about trees and leaves and branches, they all were made on the third day. And then we start looking at the myrtle trees, the fir trees, the palm branches, the palm leaves that had to be gathered for the tabernacle, for the feast. And you're supposed to rejoice before Yahuwah. You're supposed to rejoice, right? Have glee, gladness, to make glad. And kagab, and moving procession, in a circle, or in a straight line. All these aspects, right? So this is Yeremiah 10 and 1. It says, Hear the word of Yahuwah speaks, O house of Yasharal. Thus saith Yahuwah, Learn not the ways of the, of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the Shamaims, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the, of the people are vanity. It says, A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of the craftsmen. They decorated with silver and gold. <laughs> silver and gold. Wisdom is, you know, wisdom is better than silver and gold. Right, they, <clears throat> they go to get a tree. Right? It says they decorated with silver and gold. They fastened it with hammer and nails. They secure it that it don't move not, right? That's what they do. That's what we just read in Yes Yahoo, right? That's what they do so that it cannot be moved. Their idols are like scarecrows in the cucumber field, and they cannot speak. So when we start looking at this, we look at Yahushua nailed in his hands, right, that he cannot move not. We look at him coming in the form of this, this learning aspect of, that they learn from the nations and nailing himself in his hands to take people's eyes off of this practice and this learning thing, style that they learned. And he nailed them with hammer, right? And he said they decorated with silver and gold, right? When you think about silver and gold, you think about Yahushua himself. He said the word of Yahuwah is tried, as the book of Proverbs says, purified in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times, as I think it was Marshall 16. When he said, and then Eu wrote, he says, he said, you know the way that I take. He said, when I'm tried, he said, I shall come out as pure gold. <laughs> they decking with silver and gold. Not even knowing that the silver and gold they were decking with was with fire. It was the fiery trial that he went through on the cross while he was hammered in his nails, in his hands. And they nailed him and fastened him not. He, he, he didn't move not. It says, their idols are like scarecrow in the cucumber field. They cannot speak. He said, you don't hear all these things they say about you? And he answered them, not a word. He answered them, not a word. He said, if you be the benefit of Allahim, come down from the cross and we will hear you. Come down from the totality and we will hear you. He answered them, not a word. He like a scarecrow in a cucumber field. Just like a scarecrow in a cucumber field. And amazingly, when you start looking at these aspects, we start looking at these things in the way it needs to be looked at. It says, and they have, and they have to be carried for, for they cannot walk. <laughs> Guess what happened? When Yahushua was walking, he said he had to get somebody to help him bear his cross or his totality. 
Oh, you mean the tree that they cut out of the forest? That ne he needed somebody to help him because he couldn't walk no more. He says, do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, <laughs> neither is it in them to do good. Well, you know why you can't do evil and good? Because how do you do evil and good? You got to do it with your hands. But when your hands are nailed, you can't do evil <laughs> and you can't do good at all. You can't do nothing. Your hands are nailed in his hands. So when we start looking at these aspects of Yahushua Mashiach, he said, he that believes on me, he said, he shall be like a tree. So this is Psalms 92 and 12. It says, the righteous flourish like the palm tree. <laughs> Just like the palm tree. You know what it says? Like a palm tree. He said, he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. He said, the trees will break out. He said, the mountains will start break out and singing. And the trees... The branches will clack their hands. You say, you'd be like a palm tree. you are like a palm tree. So you're like a myrtle tree, like a cypress, like a palm tree. I mean, you're like a mountain in the hillsides, breaking out in the singing. Guess what it says? It says, palm tree, and grow like the cedars of Lebanon. It says, they are planted in the house of Yahuwah. Huh? They flourish in the courts of our all Yahuwah. Isn't that something? In the house of Yahuwah. Who is the house of Yahuwah? Who is, who is that? Zechariah 9 and 8. Then I will encamp, or Zechariah 9 and 8. Then I will encamp at my house as a guard. His house as a guard. You mean like protection. Right? You mean like like the mountains that surround Jerusalem, so Yahuwah will protect his people. Oh, you mean like, I will encamp my, at my house as a guard, so that none shall march to and fro. No oppressor shall again march over them. Oh, you mean I'm going to protect you. For now I see with my own eyes, rejoicing greatly, O daughter of Saum, Zion, shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, guess what it says, Shout, O loud, daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. The mountains will break forth into singing, and the trees shall clap their hands. He says, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on a foal, on a donkey. I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the, and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall speak shalom to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. And as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, huh? because of the blood of my covenant with you. You mean strengthen the blood? Adam? I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Yusuf. <laughs> this is Ukenon 12 and 9. When a large crowd of the Yahudim learned that Yahushua was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Yahudim were going away and believing in Yahushua. Don't y'all believe in this man trying to take you back to the beginning, get rid of these animal sacrifices and going back to how it was in the beginning? You don't eat no flesh. For the heart and say your heart, you wrote this priest. Tell me, why y'all going after this person telling you to go to return back how it was in the beginning? It says, in the next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Yahushua was coming to Jerusalem. So everybody at the, at the Muad, at the feast, what feast is this? So they came and took branches of palms. Oh, what feast is this? <laughs> what feast is this? Ka, Muad. 
They, get, they cook branches of palm trees. Oh, the righteous floors like a palm tree. He said, man, let's see what they're going to do. And went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, or Baruch Kabbalah Hashem, right? Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah, even the king of Yasharal. Oh, so you telling me that the, now the trees done clapped their hands and the mountain done broke out in the singing and the trees done started clapping their hands. And guess what it said? They're like myrtle trees and cypress trees. Instead of thorns and briars, like myrtles and cypress trees, like winged seeds, like a fragrant in the air. And they are on mountaintops. <laughs> That's where you find them at. And Yahushua found a young donkey and sat on it. Oh, behold your king. Behold your malak. Malaka. Do no ordinary work on this day. Why? You have a Kadush convocation. This is the first day of this. this how you say the first day? Oh, you mean a cod when he pitched his tent? Malaka. Behold your king. And he said, he sat on a donkey, and just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Saum, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Yahushua was glorified, Kabod, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. All right. So when we start looking at these aspects, we start looking at Yahushua Mashiach. We start looking at what is this all about? This cog, this muad. Behold your king. Behold the tent that pitched this tent among us. For the tabernacle of Yahuwah is with man. That's what it represents. It's with man. The sukkah is with man. Oh, you mean the 13? Oh, the sukkah is with man. I mean, Yahushua Mashiach, Yahushua himself. And amazing, you put Yahushua in a sukkah, right? You put Yahushua, you got the sukkah, right? And you put Yahushua in a sukkah, right? You get the one who sent him, Yahuwah himself. Because Yahushua's name equals it. So 13, as we talked about before, if you add it up according to the, to the, the cycle, and you put him in a suitcase, you get the, you get to the one who sent him. Kazun, Revelation 7 and 9. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no, no one could number, and every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hand. Oh, what, what feast is this? He said they got palm branches in their hand. What are they doing? And crying with a loud voice, Oh, daughter of Zion, break forth and cry aloud. Behold, your king coming, riding on the donkey coat. With a loud voice, Salvation belongs to, and he's bringing salvation. Salvation belongs to you, Allahim, Yahuwah, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Huh? Behold the Lamb of Yahuwah, with the sacrifice who will take away the sin of the world. And all the Malachim were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. Oh, you mean the four living creatures? Oh, you mean the sphere, the circle? You know how you break it down to the smallest number? Four. Thirteen. You get the four. Four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped all Yahuwah, saying, Amen. Blessing and kabod and blessing, baraka and kabod or glory and wisdom. And thanksgiving. Isn't that all the things we're supposed to do during this feast? We just talked about kukma. It brings joy. You seek it out in love. Wisdom. Thanksgiving. 
honor, and power, and might be to all Yahuwah forever and ever. Amen. 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 So you see, even the functions of the other beings in the other world. It says, Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation, and they will wash their robes and made them white in blood of the Lamb. What do you mean, the strength in the blood? They, if you were made white in the strength of the, of the blood, which means that you now you make a transformation formed from the Adama again. He said, how can, I, how can a man be born again? Shall he enter his mother's womb and be born again? He's like, you a teacher in Yashua, you don't know this? Who, what is the clay to say to the potter? What is he making? It says, Yehuchanan 10 and 7. So Yehusha again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in, go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came that that they might have they, they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays on his life for the sheep. So this is Second Corinthians five sixteen. So for now on, be, therefore we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Mashiach according to the flesh, we regard him no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Mashiach, he is a new creation. Oh, he means born again. Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. And let him have the authority of the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air, every creeping in all the earth. So Yahuwah, so Yahuwah and his Malachim by his word made Adam. Oh, you mean by the word of Yahuwah? You mean the Mashiach? Yahushua. If any man be in the word, Yahushua Mashiach, guess what? You are a new, you were born again. You are a new creation. You are new, which means every herb yielding seed is for food, which means that you have authority in the familiar, all the fish to see, follow every creeping thing, everything that creeps upon the earth. You have now been transformed into a new creation. Because before, one used to do all these other things, but now one doesn't do them anymore. That's how you know. It says, the, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. It says, all this is from all Yahuwah, who through Mashiach, huh? Who through Mashiach reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Mashiach, Yahuwah was reconciling the world to himself. Yahuwah was inside of his house, inside of a tabernacle, inside of a booth, inside of a temporary dwelling place. And guess what he did? He was reconciling the world to himself. He was inside the booth, that tent. That temporary dwelling place. When he pitched his tent in the beginning, that was Yahuwah. He's a, his express image of his persons, the word in the flesh, and it pitched his tent here. And all the gods and the goddesses that received the word when it pitched his tent pegs here gave you power to say, let there be light. Or higher, or higher. Light came to be and light existed. And guess what it says? He says, it says, that is, in Mashiach, Yahuwah was reconciling the world to himself, not accounting their trespasses against them. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. You mean reconciliation is to shoot, to return back. 
to how it was. Because the, the, the beginning is the end. A cod one is the end, and a cod one is the beginning. So 1 Corinthians 6 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Ruach Hakadosh within you? <laughs> you should be like a tree. You should be like a myrtle, like a cypress, like a palm tree. You shall be like. Adam, what did he make Adam with? He breathed into him the word, the bear, the bar. He made him with the word of Yahuwah, the Yahushua Mashiach, the word. He says, whom, he says, guess what he says, and whom you have from Yahuwah. <laughs> so when did, when did Adam get a body? He made it with the word of Yahuwah. He said, don't you know that your body is the, the, word, the actual place where the Ruach is? Whom you have from Yahuwah, which means that this body he gave you that you dwell inside, you're a God of gods who received the light, you now have a body to dwell inside like Adam did, or like Yahushua did in the beginning. When you start seeing the word on the inside, and then you start to see the formation of what? You are not your own. <laughs> you are not your own. For you were bought with the price. I brought, I brought you back. So glorify Okabo Yahuwah Elohim in your body, in your temple, in your tabernacle, in your booth, in your house with your myrtle branches, your fir branches, your olive branches, and your palm branches. Because your body is a temple. Your body is the booth or temporary dwelling place. So Hebrews 13, 8. Yahuwah the same yesterday to, to, to Yahuwah is the same yesterday, today, and, the, and forever. You mean I am the I'm which was, which is, and which is to come. Past, present, and future. Do not be led away with diverse strange teachings. When it says strange teachings, what we just learned? Learn not the way of the, he, the nations. <laughs> for it is good for the heart to be strengthened with grace, a con, not, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. That's why Yahushua came in the form of all these things. It says, we have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. They don't have no right to eat it. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the Kedush place by the high priest as they sacrifice for sin are burnt offerings burned outside the camp. So Yahushua Mashiach also suffered out outside the camp, outside the gate, to, in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured for we for here we have no lasting city but we seek the city that is to come we have no place in that city because they doing all that in that city <laughs> that that city that's doing that we have no place there that's not our that's not that's not the place where you going to be coming to like that's not what we're looking forward to we, a place where they're not going to be doing these things anymore. But he says, through him, let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise to Yahuwah. And people wonder why this feast has so many offerings and sacrifices. Not animals, but so many praise offerings. It's only to teach one to do it continually. Evening sacrifice, Shabbat sacrifices, Tamar, Sukkah sacrifices. So many different sacrifices, it's to, it's to show how one can do it to continue. So let us offer up the sacrifices of praise to Yahuwah. That is the fruit of that is the fruit of lips. That that acknowledge his name. Rejoice. Celebrate. Kagah, dance a procession, sing, a song, a hymn, a confession, while singing, and praising. At the same time, dancing, 
and confessing at the same time. Rejoicing and confessing at the same time. And dance and be joyful. Why? He said, it's the fruit of your lips. That's the fruit that he wants. He said, a food offering. He said, I hey, want a fruit, a food offering. You got to do a food offering every day for seven days. The food offering is praise. That's the food offering. Along with the other offerings. So it's just all singing and dancing. It's a rejoicing moment. It's a food offering. That is, that, that, that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. Right? So we think about it even sharing. Whether it's the song, whether it's food, whether it's anything, you share. Why? Because for such sacrifices are pleasing to you who. So all the remember we were talking about sacrifices and offering, I never wanted animals and blood and oxen and all these things that people give him. Grain offerings and food offerings and all these things, like all the things that people are carnal, natural things. Yahuwah wanted good deeds and sacrifices of your lips, like singing and confessing while you're singing and dancing in a circle and rejoicing and sharing. He said, these are the sacrifices that please Yahuwah. People want to know, how can I please Yahuwah? How can I please the all who made all things during this time? Rejoicing, singing, praising, lifting up your hands and saying, I live. I live. Lifting up your hands and saying, I live. And rejoicing. All right. So this is ODE Solomon Shalom 7, 18 through 28. It says, And the Most High shall be known in his name, in his Kedeshim, his saints, to announce to those that have songs of the coming of Yahuwah, those who acknowledge his name. Let us offer up the sacrifices of praise continually, for this is the fruit of our lips. And if you have anything to share, he says, share it. For such sacrifices are pleasing to Yahuwah, to Yah. He says, that they may go forth to meet him and may sing to him with joy. That's what, that's what wisdom is. Kukma. Joyful, glad, glee, right? Kagab. To make joy, to make glad. Right? With your cough, with your branches with your hands. The branches are gonna start clapping their hands. And with the harp and many tones, right? We think about instruments, instrumental tuning. Verse 20 says, the seers shall come before him and they shall be seen before him. And they shall praise Yahuwah for his love because he is near and he and be holdeth. He's near. And hatred shall be taken away, taken from the earth, and along with jealousy, it shall be drowned. It says, for ignorance have been destroyed, because the knowledge of Yahuwah has arrived. It is, it has arrived. No longer gathering the myrtle branches, the palm branches, the, the, the willows. And all of the palm branches and rejoice before Yahuwah and celebrate. It says, They who make songs shall sing of the con, the grace of Yahuwah the Most High. Another chance through his son Yahushua Mashiach. The nail, the tent peg, the tent that pitched this tent, this tabernacle here on earth. And all who receive the light. Because he pitched his light, his tent, his lit up tent here on the dark world. But all who received that light, he gave him power to become the, the children of light, children of oil, strength joined to the mind. The sun, he said, I have come that you might have life and I'm having more abundantly. And you know there's strength and life in the blood. And amazingly, when you add up the sun, it equals the bin. It's bith, bai, bin. And the bit and the noon, it means the, sh the life of the house. I have come that you might have life. I am the bin of the Father, the strength of the house. The one house. The one ruach, the one word, the one, one word, the one wisdom and one knowledge and one understanding. And it says right here, it says, and they shall, and they shall bring their songs and their hearts shall be like the day 
and like the excellent beauty of Yahuwah for pleasant songs. Then he said, then Shaluma say, I desire wisdom before health and beauty. He said, Kukmo, wisdom. My way is beautiful. Is this way beautiful? If it is beautiful, break out into singing. Share what you have. For this way is beautiful. And then it says, And there shall neither be anything that breathes without knowledge, nor anything that is dumb. There ain't gonna be no silent people. Everything gonna be breathing out. Breath. When you speak, breath comes out of your mouth. Right? Knowledge is what one speaks or one sings. Right? For he hath given a mouth to his creation. <laughs> the fruit of the lips. People say, I got two lips. How many lips you got? You got two of them, right? I got two lips. <laughs> you got two lips. And amazingly, one of the, when you start looking at Kagog and you start looking at procession and you start looking at, four, you start looking at the, the aspects of this thing, You start looking at the second letter of the alphabet. You get two lips. House. People don't even. Here we go. And he says right here. And he says he. It says, and there shall neither be anything that breathes without knowledge, nor anything that is dumb, for he hath given a mouth to his creation. Any man being Mashiach, he's a new creation. Do you have a mouth? He said the old has passed away. I used to be mute and dumb. But see, now I have knowledge. I can breathe it out. The old has passed away. Now I'm a new creation. Now all things become new. It says, to open the voice of the mouth. It says, for he has given a mouth to his creation, verse 27, to open the voice of the mouth toward him, to praise him. And guess what it says? Confess ye his power. Isn't that what? Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? A confession? Confess ye his power and show, show forth his grace, a con, another chance. Show forth his grace, his con. Hallelujah. Hello, praise, yah. Hello, yah. So when we start looking at this feast, this cog, this muab, um, it's not a muab, a cog to be silent. It is a cog, a muab to open the mouth and to declare that Yahuwah reigns and lives inside of their booth, their tabernacle, and clap the branches of their hands and allow them to, to make a sound of vibration and frequency and proclaim the coming of Yahuwah with song knowing no man nor the day nor hour he can come at morning time noon or evening at midnight Barak is he who finds so doomed continually so when we look at this this Kog this Moab we look at this day of Kog Sukkah a day to let love live, let love vibrations vibrate, and to keep it not according to the carnal will of man and the carnal appetites and the carnal mind, but to keep it according to the fruit of the lips, the fruit of the branches and the mountains breaking out in the singing, keeping it according to a new and a better way as it was in the beginning. When all things have breath, praise Yahuwah, from the animals to the trees, waving in the wind, from all the creatures and beings of the planet, to give honor and praise to the King, the one who rides on the wings of the wind, the one who comes on the clouds, Yahushua Mashiach, the one who was nailed in his hands and hammered with an anvil and a nail, and a tree cut out of the forest that it moved not. Even as this, they came, the chief priests, and they came when Yahushua was in the garden, and they cut him, and they took him from 
The guardian had brought him, and the fiend formed nails in his hands, knowing that he is the sacrifice. To draw peoples away from the customs and traditions of the earth, to bring them back to how it was in the beginning, how it was in the beginning. No longer sacrificing and offering for sins, but the sacrifices of Yahuwah is a crushed heart, a confession, and rejoicing and confessing and rejoicing in the second chance in His coming, in His grace. So as we move forward in our lives, knowing that though one can understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and understand, have all kukma and all amuna, all faith that he can move mountains. But if you don't have a hab, you don't have a haba of love, you have you are nothing. You are nothing. So as we walk and we live during this time, let us lift our hands and say we live. For this is a day of life. It's a day of another day to breathe the air and to celebrate. To celebrate, to kagab, to dance and move in a circle, in a procession. It's a day to rejoice and be glad. It's a day to remember. Remember the tent that was placed here. To light every man that cometh into the world. To light every man that cometh into the world. And we may, all that receive him, all the gods and the goddesses that receive him. Receive the oil, receive the light, the strength drawn to the mind. He gave them power to become the children of light, of oil. The children of oil. For we are crucified, how you say, with Mashiach. Do you have your nails? Do you have your pegs in? Because that is a reflection of him. So as we move forward, we let, as we say, love live, let love God, and let the truth reign in every man, woman, and child from this day forward. Not only from this day forward, from to every generation and generations and generations. That a continual light and a continual oil may reign inside of this home that we live in, this place, this home we call earth. As above, so below. As in Shamayim, so on earth. Let everything that have breath, everything that has in the Shama, the Ruach, let everything that's formed and shaped from the, from the clay of the blood of Mashiach, the strength in the blood, let them. Let them have breath and let them proclaim another chance.